But don't get too creative out there. I think that's probably the big thing. Some people be trying to like put all kinds of bell peppers and <laughs> greens and all this extra stuff in it. Like, and oh, let me cheese. switch up the formula, make my personal <laughs> mac and cheese. You're going to love it. This is macadocious and cheese. No, it's whack and cheese. Return of a mac and cheese. <laughs> Experiencing the CO2 Carbon Ops broadcast. Let's begin. And you ain't said it no better. Yo, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. You are now rocking with the team. This is the CO2 Carbon Ops broadcast with your boy Diggy Jones. Diggy, 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 Diggy. And I'm too sexy. And but I'll tell you my name. Some guy. It's the merciless Reese L. Black. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Black. What up, baby? <laughs> <laughs> I had to be stupid for a second. You know, it's a good festive moment. You gotta do it, yo. <laughs> it's Turkey Day, man. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you viewers. Hopefully, you are enjoying your time with your family and loved ones. This is a celebration right now. We checked out, decked out the set a little bit different. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? We're trying to keep with the theme and keep it all love and festive over here. Hopefully, yes, y'all indeed. got good food going and. Mama's cooking some good stuff up there in the kitchen and smelling all nice and, and beautiful over there. Woo! Yes, Cause, indeedy. Because what, what we doing is pizza. Yeah, you know. <laughs> ain't nobody really cooking nothing, you know, early this morning. I mean, no. some people are. It ain't ready. So we got to eat. We hungry. Yeah. Fortunately, uh, <laughs> pizza guys is open all the time. So that's how we do this. So what is good, man? What man, is, man, I'm, I'm feeling good, man. Like, uh... You know, I was thinking about like, you know, how people get all ready in the black folks community for Thanksgiving and aunties and stuff got their own specialty plates that they bring to the table. And mama's Mm -hmm. got her stuff. My mom, she the one that's like really the thoroughbred cook in my family. Mm. Uh, Grandma was was the was the one, but she learned a lot. So she's like the heavyweight when it comes to this stuff. Mm. But uh, my aunties, you know, they all contribute and stuff. But I'm like, um. I'm a very picky eater, man. And I was thinking about it. I'm like, man, it's a it's a crazy game that we play on Thanksgiving in the black community because oh, yeah. the plate, man, can make or break your whole Thanksgiving. <laughs> I know for myself, I don't trust everybody's food. I just I just don't. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be real selective on who we go to eat at their house this year. Mm-hmm. What about you? Oh, uh, well, my family. We all know whose house we eating at. Everybody is going to either eat at Big Mama House, which is Grandma. That's the elder. Yeah, yeah. But who usually cooks is usually Mom. And like you said, the aunties. You know. But one of the things I noticed, I noticed that the competition has died down in the kitchen. Think so? Yeah, because I don't really see moms and the aunties really competing with each other anymore. Mm. You know what I mean? But I always have one question. Mm. How come when it comes to competing on which food is better, it's always the macaroni and cheese? Yeah. (laughs) You can have like two pans of cobbler, one turkey, one little spot of greens or whatever. But why are there eight slabs of mac and cheese? Man, because the mac and cheese, that's like the the cornerstone of this. Like that. Why? What is so great about the mac? What in in the history of slavery did mac and cheese come so important? (laughs) I don't know. You know how like when you cook it tight and it looks like glue? Like it's the glue of the Thanksgiving dinner. Like it's just the way it is. I'll, I'll tell you what, like, I'm not even a cheese person. Like, those who know me, I don't really do much cheese, although it's ironic that I'm eating pizza I right am. now. I just pay for it later, unfortunately. <laughs> it's got, like, I'm, I'm particular. It's only going to be on certain things. I'll eat it on pizza. I'll eat a little bit of mac and cheese, but you know if you got a banging set of mac and cheese, mm. if I'm eating it, like, because it's got to be perfect. I don't like that runny cheese. I don't mm. like the, like, some people, like, cook it to where, I like, I like a little bit of crisp, yeah, yeah. but it can't be burnt. It's on the edges yeah the edges that's like the, that's the first the corner you yeah go to the first place you go is the corner yeah but not dry you know like some mm. people are too dry or they don't got season season that's right so that's the cornerstone you know what's man. funny i don't even i still to the day really don't understand how mac and cheese is made so good so what makes the mac and cheese so good it's so is it, basic is it, it's like what's what how do you okay what is the culinary <laughs> what is the <laughs> what is the culinary intelligence behind which cheese you use because what is mm. it is cheddar right 
usually, but maybe, sometimes maybe people mozzarella. mix. Yeah, yeah, mozzarella or like um, I have a friend that, that cooks gorgonzola and he swears by it. I don't even know what that is. And he mixes it. He mixes cheddar, <laughs> uh, gorgonzola, and then like uh, I forget what other. He has like three cheeses that he uses. Mm-hmm. I tried his. It's good, man. He swears by it. I, I don't know what. Go- Look, I'm just like you know right now. I'm kind of like colonistically ignorant. I don't know if that's a word, but it is now. <laughs> but when it comes to different cheese and stuff like that, I really don't know. Yeah. All I just know if it's good, I'm smashing it. But don't get too creative out there. I think that's probably the big thing. Some people be trying to like put all kinds of bell peppers and <laughs> greens and all this extra stuff in it. Like, oh, let me cheese? switch up the formula. Make my personal <laughs> mac and cheese. You're going to love this. This is macadocious and cheese. No, it's wacky Re- return cheese. Return of the mac and cheese. <laughs> like, I'm like, stop it, bro. Like, I don't, yeah, this is not the time to be healthy. This is Thanksgiving. I am thankful for the heart attack that I may push myself to oh, right no, now. We're going to have some clogged arteries by the end of the day. Of course. And we'll be healthy by Christmas and we're going to do it again. Christmas dinner. Yo, yo my, hey, I got to question mm-hmm. how do you so have you ever been at somebody's house and like the plate and they swore by the plate you can oh, tell yeah. like everybody swears by their plate right <sighs> and the plate is just garbage <sighs> like garbage i've had situations where i've been at people's houses and like i was trying to find where the trash can was and how quick i could like sneak the plate there without <laughs> nobody knowing but if there was a dog around and i could like <laughs> drop it on accident mm-hmm. like, have really- you ever had that Nah, that's because I'm usually at black folks' house. Okay, well, no. you smarter than nah, me. Nah, I'm not. No smoke, no shade, no jabs, no shots fired. <laughs> but no, nah, I really haven't had like a bad play. And pretty much every every year, even my, even my brother, because he's the chef. Okay. You know what I mean? Even even they, his his mac and cheese or his gumbo. Oh, snap. You know, it's, it's wicked. Man. Mad wicked. But well, no, nah, I haven't went to the trash on anybody yet. Yeah, I mean, I, I've... I've had that experience before. Um, I, I've tried to like kind of get out of situations, but you know, I'm so picky that I've had moments where I could kind of rely on my pickiness and just be like, you know, guys, like you, your stuff is good. Don't don't worry about it. But it's just me. I can only eat cheese on certain things. Like I say that way, and they think that it's like a medical condition versus basically your stuff is you garbage. don't want to get gassed, right? <laughs> right, yeah. But I'm like, dang, I can't think of like a creative way. To like bail when everybody else is eating and they're looking at you. Mm-hmm. I got a friend from college uh, that uh man, I went to his family's house. Fortunately, they can cook. All right. But uh he's Italian. Oh. So they cook a lot of like pasta and yeah. a lot of like bread and like a lot of that kind of stuff. And like she was going ham on us. Like mm. she would not let us not eat. Oh, and no. not only that, like you getting a full plate. Not only a full plate, like she kept checking on us and being like, "Y'all good? And you want some more?" And like, wouldn't even <laughs> like she's asking as she's scooping more stuff on our plate. And I just got to the point where I was so full. I'm like, "Dang, man! Like, how do I say no and bail?" Do Italians even know what leftovers are? Oh yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Have you ever went to like high school or any any place with an Italian kid and they brought leftovers from home? Yeah. It was almost like they smashed everything that night. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. But it's a nightmare though if you know somebody that's like that and the food is like garbage. <laughs> Theirs was at least garbage decent. Oh, oh, I will say this. So, you know, I grew up in a church. So I actually uh, went to uh, I think it was a is a pastor or the, or the uh, pastor's wife was the one that was throwing it anyway it was mm. it was one of them that was throwing a function and uh we went over to the house and they were cooking and uh what was it they had turkey mm. they had uh mashed potatoes mm. and they had greens which mm. sounds like the perfect you formula don't mess right that up. that's dope that's dope and, on paper right and how can you but uh, i got there uh, <laughs> i had the plate Gosh, man, like the mashed potato. How do you mess up mashed potatoes? Mm. There was nothing on it. It was like they literally cut a potato, put it in the microwave for like it. five minutes. It was just like, so they gave we you cafeteria good. food, basically. Basically, no salt, no nothing. They didn't even have salt on, on the table. Like it was just that. The greens were like green. Like, you know how like people cook greens in just water and mm-hmm. just like take it and put it on a plate and that's it? As this, it was basically that. No seasoning? No, no seasoning. Was there at least little bacon strips or something? In the no, because, I mean, like, she was borderline, uh, like, they were vegan for a while. Oh, I mean, vegetarian okay. for a while. Okay. And then they moved to, like, eating meat, but then they still wanted to be kind of health, health conscious. But I'm thinking, like, that's you. Nigga. Like, you let me, <laughs> like, you invited me to your house. to like, your guests. Right. Like, I need some pepper. 
of seats, bro. And I was just like, how do I get out of this, man? Like, it was that So what plain. do unseasoned greens taste like? Like, I've I don't, never had it. Like, it's just like lifeless. Like, like, like leaves? I mean, it tastes, you know, yeah, it's like fresh, I guess. I've never even had a leaf before. Like, I don't know, you're making it seem like an actual leaf off a tree tastes better than what you had. No, like, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, it tastes like a vegetable, but come on, like, I'm expecting cooked food. <laughs> it tastes like I went outside and grabbed some greens <laughs> and started eating it. That's like what a, they did. <laughs> yeah, that's what it felt like. I just couldn't do it. They didn't so. at least season the water. I mean, and it was, yeah, and that's the other thing water. That's all they serve. They had no juice. They had no soda. They had nothing. And I'm like, I know you guys are healthy, but is this like, is this, this a, a trap? Is this really happening? <laughs> yeah. So I was it's like, God. Like, <laughs> no good, man. Mm. Anyway, I don't know. I Be careful out there, y'all. Like, <laughs> I know you guys are enjoying yourselves, and hopefully you're eating plates that are safe. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's sketchy in some people's yeah. houses out there. Yep. So. Or and if it is that sketchy. Go ahead and get you some pizza. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't really want to name say the name of the company that because, because we're not promoting them. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. We're not getting paid or nothing like that. But this is all we got until we get to the main course later on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do like me, man. I, for those who are, are listening, you won't see it, but you know, I have no problem with getting me some ramen if it goes <laughs> if it goes left. <laughs> I keep that in my plate. So. Hey, ramen is good. Don't hate on the ramen. Yeah, I still I still eat the shrimp ramen. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you I, I turn ramen out. <laughs> Boil it, pepper it, throw some uh, scrambled eggs in it, some celery. Oh, you talking about the advanced ramen? I'm talking about the pitcher that's on the ramen packet. Oh, you trying, trying to duplicate that's, that's that? That's a couple of noodles you got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that fancy ramen, like the shin ramen with the spices and stuff. That's how you do it. Yeah. All right, yeah, that was cool. Um, so let's see, let's talk about what's going on uh, in the media, man. What you got? Mm-hmm. As usual, I know you really don't care. Nope, never but, do. But that, <laughs> but this one you might want to care about. Okay. Dr. Dre won his case against his wife in the divorce. Dre. But that's not even the news news. Okay. It's the fact that he won and she won't even let it go. <laughs> wow. So first. Wait, 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 wait. Let's let's give uh, the oh, yeah, audience yeah. a little context. What, right. what case we talking about? Okay, so first case uh well it was the first and only case uh dr dre and his wife were going through a divorce and for those that been under a rock we all know that mrs dr dre was asking for like what like four or five million a month i don't know anybody that rich where they could just dish that all on you know as disposable monthly you know spouse support wow that's crazy you know but apparently she has some stuff the stuff that she was asking for was like mainly like stuff for kids and I think the kids is like you know 38 or whatever <laughs> you know pay for tutoring or whatever she just had like a main luxury lifestyle alright mm. but at the, end, at the end of the day he, he won his case so he didn't have to drop her a dime or nothing like that but I'm sure since that's his ex-wife he still might give a little something something you know what I'm saying yeah but then she decides well, you know what? I know he cheated on me. So she rounds up like three other past chicks oh, wow. <laughs> that she believed that he was having an affair with. Wow. <laughs> now, the thing is, I don't know how that outcome has turned out yet because I stopped caring. I'm like, yeah. he won. What more do I need to like yeah. investigate for? Right, right. Yeah. And now it, is a, it, is, it seems that she's trying to find out if he has any other baby mamas that she may not know about. Dude, mm. she is literally, <laughs> literally digging a hole. She is reaching so far that it's bad. It's like, damn, pulling a Trump. you just can't take an <laughs> L. Okay, okay, Trump will tweet and show pettiness about not taking his L. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Trump ain't going out, well, okay, he, he's supposed to file a complaint to, you know, Supreme Court or whatever, you mm-hmm. know, because, you know, against, you know, the election. But officials. that's more to save face. Than yeah, 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 yeah. But when you're over here fishing, for a way to get some bread, it's like wow. And then on top of all that, it was said that she embezzled like over four hundred thousand from him anyway. Damn. Yeah. Really? Now, if it was a uh, over a period of time, that's one thing. But yeah. if it was like recently, she ended up pulling like four hundred, and that's why he probably wanted to like divorce you because like, yo, you stole from me. Wow. You know, I mean, some people will argue it's like, but they were married, so you kind of stole from us. It's like, no, 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 no. He was, I believe, death row before he met her. Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's not going to be one of those things where. I helped him become Dr. Dre. Right. He's been Dr. Dre since the 
wrecking crew. Okay. You know what I mean? Like we he since the glitter and the tight <laughs> and the tight onesie. <laughs> right. Right. You know what I mean? It's like Dre has been like awesome. He's been a great, you know, uh musical influencer producer since the beginning of time. So what is it? She feels like she's entitled yes. to like what yes. half of everything. That's what gets me. Like if I get it, if you're a regular person, man, yeah. but like if you are a billionaire and of you course. marry somebody now, granted, like if you had years in it, like you guys been married since you're 18 or something like that. And she mm -hmm. held you down from mm -hmm. the beginning. I do think she deserves something. But come on, like you you brought in a billion dollars into the family and she brought in what? No. Cupcakes and like <laughs> <laughs> PTA meetings. Right. Yeah, I mean, no, no, that's good. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, I mean, yeah. I get your role, but yeah. do you deserve five hundred million dollars at that point? No. Like, come on, like no. this, you got to be reasonable to a certain extent. You want to know what's worse? Uh. If you ever look up, you should do this like for fun. If you ever look up, like you know, the most richest women on the planet or whatever. Okay, the majority of them are rich by divorce. Wow, like Oprah is name somebody other than Oprah who got money. Oprah who the money? and Kylie. And who else? Yeah, they, like they, the Kardashians, they, they earn their money. But yeah, like, but name somebody else prominent. I mean, I guess actresses, but I don't know. No, we're talking about billionaire status. Oh, billionaire like Jeff status. Jeff Bezos' yeah. ex-wife is a billionaire. Oh, well. You know, shoot, Kylie, I, I believe know. Kylie is getting up to billionaire status too, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you have Oprah. Now, let's go down a, dang, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it because it's the raw cast. Yeah. Then we have, what's her name? Is it Juanita Jordan? Is that George's ex-wife? It's, it's, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She yeah, yeah. got $500 million after the divorce. Tiger Jeez. Woods' ex-wife? Did she really get $500 million? God. <laughs> That's crazy. You know what? Imagine winning that. What like what judge said? Like you know what? I'm with her, dude. Like I know she didn't do shit. Like, I, like I know you're asking for twenty million, but I'm gonna award. award I'm not the war you have. Five hundred million. Bing. Right. You you're just like life changing. Like you wasn't money. ready for that. Yo, come on. <laughs> yeah, you know. So yeah, she what an got asshole. she got that bag. Tiger Woods' ex wife got that bag. Oh, way back in the day, Johnny Carson's ex wife. She got that bag. Wow. Paul McCartney, she got that bag. There's got to be some sort of like limitations on this <laughs> stuff. Cause come on. I, I, I would like want to like jump off a bridge. I mean, granted, yes, if you were a billionaire and you lose 500000 you still got 500000 Like you're not going to like die or anything. Yeah. But, but that is a lot of money to give to somebody who... Ain't did. who well, I won't say didn't do nothing, but, but they didn't do. Shit. They didn't do what you did <laughs> yeah, to contribute. They didn't work. Right? Like, yeah, like you were didn't start as an intern right. at NBC Studios or something, and then work your way up to a mobile status. Right. You know and what I know mean? what y'all gonna say. Well, what about you? Should have got a prenup. Forget the prenup. Prenup or not, like there there should be a. a some sort of cap as to like yeah. what even that <laughs> entails, right? Like, because I've heard prenups, yeah. Like some people have prenups and they still have have legal issues. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's there's got to be a change to that because that's not fair. Mm -mm. But you know, it is what it is. Oh, speaking of prenups, mm. there was this one guy. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> It's that bad. It's, it's, <laughs> There's this way he doesn't even have a name. This one guy in history. <laughs> that's that's what it feels like. Right, right. Like I have never heard this happen to any dude. <laughs> like it's so bad. Like, <laughs> like he's the Voldemort of bad scenarios. Like, dude, you're gonna slap the out of him. I'm telling you, I don't even know his name and I don't care. Uh, it's the fact of what he did, which made him the poster boy of just like beta male. Uh oh. This fool. Maybe it was Canada, I can't remember. Uh -huh. This fool was sugaring if y'all know that it's just basically when you keep when you tricking off to another chick you know a sugar baby sugar daddy situation mm, yeah he was like a sugar daddy to this one chick who had a couple of kids or whatever and they, they've been sugaring for i don't know maybe a year i'll just say i don't know okay she takes him to court because he stopped paying her money mm. the judge awards her like 50 g's a month what? somewhere around that ballpark i could be wrong but yeah they weren't married not married? They weren't mad. They, it was just a sugar situation. These assholes, And man. she won. And I'm over here like, I didn't even think that was possible. So See, look, you know what? I'm thinking there's like judges out there who've been through some crap. And this is yo. like their revenge. Like, <laughs> like their relationship too. Because you know, I figure they're humans too. They probably been but, through some craziness too. But I too. could just be an ass whenever I want. I can't. Like this is my judgment just so I can just make it a story. Just so this could be on the shade room or something. That's I'm going to award this chick a sugar who you had. Maybe you know what? But then again, it could be a lesson learned. Yeah. Because I'm over here. The first thing I thought about, like, where was his day once? 
Okay, you're like, you're, you, you're a multi-millionaire hanging out with a bunch of multi, other multi-millionaires. Yeah, y'all have mistresses and stuff like that too. But how come neither one of y'all just been somebody like, wait, 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 let me get this straight. Right. Yeah. I mean, we all got mistresses here and there, but it's like a one-month contract right, and right. then it's over. You mean to tell me you told her you were going to stop and she took you to court? Nah, fam. like you were a baby daddy, like you were a husband. So it was the it was the simple fact that she was basically um um she, she this is what she was surviving off of. Wow. So I guess the court treated it like like spousal support. Like this was basically your spouse. You provided. Nah, you but were like the pro, you were that's the, the provider woman in this that case. Ain't nobody even supposed to know about her. Like she's supposed to be on the. Uh, now the thing is, I don't know if dude was married though. See, that's why I'm thinking uh, like, okay, because I was like, I was like, because most most sugar daddies yeah. are not married. You right, know what I mean? right. Mistress is the chick on the side. Right, right, <laughs> you know right, what I mean? Yeah. But if we're in a sugar baby sugar daddy situation, this was like, oh, okay, well I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, but I ain't got no wife. Okay, so it's like the escort type of scenario where yeah. it's like you're single man, you're lonely. You just, you know, giving money to somebody to hang out with you. Exactly. And she took him to court. Yeah. Feeling like she owed him. Or he owed him. She slept one. That's another thing, too. A lot of these sugar babies don't be sleeping with these guys. Wow. So we really don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, so 50 racks a month, she won. Judge Judy. <laughs> I'm blaming you because it wasn't. You know what? Actually, uh, let me just let me just nah, segue. We ain't trying to get flagged. Like, no, you know, yeah, let, let me let me stop out. stop my section. <laughs> don't don't sue me. Uh, uh, we'll leave that alone. Um, yeah, Walker, that's being raw is one thing, but that's Judge Judy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Don't lock me up for for my commentary. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that that's pretty crazy. That was uh, the I know you don't care segment. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break on this. Uh, lovely thanksgiving themed episode of the co2 rawcast so enjoy your plates out there we're gonna take a break and we will be right back all right all right and we are back once again. Thank you for keeping tune with us. This is the CO2 Carbon Ops Rockcast. And um, yeah, you know, we talk about Thanksgiving and um, you guys are out there, you know, with your plates and enjoying yourself. And I can't think of a better segue into the meat and potatoes of our podcast. This is the baked beans and the grits and the... Uh, Black eyed peas and uh, mm-hmm. apple pie and the uh, sweet potato pie and the pumpkin pie and all the pies out there. We call this fixings. Hey, listen. Cooking in the kitchen. This the grits and fixings. How I sit the mixing. All right, this is the fixings. Uh, our Thanksgiving day themed uh, version of the fixings and today we want to talk about um what we're thankful for right mm-hmm. like uh you know we all have you know lives out there that we're uh, going through that are trying and sometimes stressful but uh you know it's good to like reflect on the things that we you know appreciate and that are good in our lives and we're thankful for but you know this is a raw cast so we keep it real around here we got to do a little bit of a spin on that and today i want to talk about thank Thankfulness for honesty in relationships. Mm. Um, You know, there's a lot of people out there who are of the mindset that woman or man, uh, as long as your significant other is thankful or is uh, honest in a relationship, you should be thankful, regardless of whether that's, you know, telling you some some real stuff that may hurt your feelings. um, You should just be thankful for it, that they're being real with you and take it. So that's my spin today. I want to talk about (laughs) should we be thankful for the honesty in a relationship or do we need to kind of sugarcoat some stuff here and there to keep people's feelings intact? What do you think? Mm. (sighs) Okay. (laughs) I'm trying to find my drink because this might be, I might need a drink around here. (laughs) Well, see, the question is, is... When did we get so sensitive to the truth amongst all things? Yeah. You know, like when did honesty become penalized? Right. There used to be a time where you appreciated somebody's honesty. You know what I mean? In in Hollywood, in movies, 
you guys get mad at the individual that's a liar. But yet, in reality speaking, y'all, you guys are the pathological liar, <laughs> you know, and yes. th- this is this was actually, you know, really, 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 really deep. And uh, the reason why I wanted to like really, really, you know, get in, you know, to like you said, to the meat and gravy of this thing, is because now it's an issue. And I feel like it's tearing a lot of people apart, especially during, you know, I don't want to date the, the you know, date the video, mm. but, you know, with the COVID situation. Yeah, yeah. More relationships and marriages have been split, <laughs> you know, all the way from quarantine up until now. Cooped because up, man. there was a lack, lack of honesty, mm-hmm. you know. So now the reasons have came out while individuals actually got in relationships and got married and things of that nature, right? Yeah, yeah. you know. But first and first of all, let's 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 take a trickle down into the different uh, aspects of uh, what I wanted to dissect. Is there a difference between uh, constructive criticism and radical honesty? Good point. You know, why is there a penalty? For honesty and what is the sweet spot between you know honesty and the soft fib basically meaning not telling you what's really on my mind but just, but just being passive about the honest truth yeah yeah so i wanted to take this time to revisit um the snl skit with adele <laughs> okay and i don't know if you've seen it they did a skit where her and some other white women obviously middle-aged over 40 they traveled to africa okay for their little excursions with the tribesmen okay (laughs) and a lot of they got a lot of backlash like snl normally does Mm. because snl keeps it real Mm. and then so yes people don't know that a lot of women especially once divorced they fly out to different continents to get their groove back (laughs) Mm. and those continents just happen to be either african or caribbean (laughs) okay you know so is that the honest truth that you know you know, middle aged or older white women just love to be sexually attractive to the brother. That's their preference, especially if they were married to somebody who was non black. So, okay, I guess this is kind of a seg or sidetrack, but yeah. like, why do you why do you think they need feel the need to have to go that far yeah. to you know connect on that when you you got got people here that you know <laughs> because a lot of women lie about that. <laughs> so it's it's the it's they, the low key like they want to yeah. be a part of that fantasy but the reality of it is too yeah. shocking why, why you want to go visit nigeria yeah okay i can ask you this is there a reason why you would love to go to cuba or dominican republic or rio de janeiro i mean i would just go on vacation just because <laughs> it's like a dope place to visit yeah sure right. but, but if i was a single person <laughs> yeah. yeah you know you're going there you know trying to find something you ain't you trying know? to go see christ the redeemer you don't right. care about that big Right, statue. right. You know you, you exactly where for, you're going. For you the going exotic to view. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going for the exotic view. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, you know what you're going for. Yeah. You know, so yeah, they, they got hell for that, but that was the honest truth. Right. That's what some of these women do. They go out and they go get something they ain't never had before, yeah. and they consider that as part of their journey, you know? And then I also wanted to take this time to revisit, this is a real deal, revisit Boosie's a conversation on Mike Tyson's podcast mm-hmm. when Boosie decided to take it upon himself to, um, you know, criticize Dwayne Wade, shout out to Dwayne Wade, mm-hmm. about, you know, uh, his, uh, I'll just say his daughter's uh, transition. Boosie wasn't cool with that because he said as a child, they should not be sexualized. Mm-hmm. They should be able to like determine that as they become an adult, as they get older. But, the, you know, the girl is like underage. Mm-hmm. She's a minor and you guys are taking her on tour, you know, like it's something to be like, you know, proud of. And I get it. Your flavor is your flavor. Mm-hmm. But Boosie was just making the point like this is dangerous. You're kind of, and, yeah, uh, you're kind Mike of, Tyson called him out and yeah. basically said, are, are you? you saying that you're And I get it. And I get it. Your now, closet. Thing, yeah. That was interesting about that uh, interview is Mike Tyson agreed with everything Boosie was yeah, saying. Yeah. But yeah. Tyson was just making the point like, who are you? Right. Like, you're not no not psychologist. You're, right. not child, yeah, yeah. you're not a sociologist. Right. You're not a professor or anything like Who are you? You know what I mean? But Boosie was telling, you know, giving his honest criticism, Mm -hmm. but Tyson was letting him know, no, you're right. But the point was just like, who are you? Now, the thing is, Tyson was being honest himself. Like, what are you? uh, You know, like, are you a closet homosexuals? Because people who don't like homosexuality be homosexual self, which I still don't get. That's like me being aquaphobic. But you're telling me I really want to swim. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's, right. that's why I don't get that right. part. You know what I mean? But the thing is, Tyson was being honest. Boosie was being honest. 
And these were two individuals that still caught hell after that podcast. Right. These were two brothers being honest with one another. And after the, at the uh, end of that segment, uh, Tyson was just gaming them up, just right. being honest about his life. Like, you're insecure. He told Boosie, you're insecure. That's what it is. That's why you're worried about somebody else's life, because you ain't got your ish together. He so, said, I was like that myself. I had to pay people to be my friends. He had okay. to pay for an entourage. And he was being honest there. But yet, Tyson still got criticized just for being honest about something like that and then going after Boosie, you know? Well, let's let's uh, let's pull it back just a little bit, because even though I, I know we started off kind of more talking about this as a relationship issue, yeah, but, but I kind of like where you're going with this, that mm-hmm. this is more of a, you know, kind of a global, you know, issue of just, you know, honesty in 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 our desires in general mm-hmm. and like our our perspectives when it comes to like how we you know view other people and how we we view our own relationships Mm -hmm. um i i I get it because why can't somebody you know if 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 you if you have a feeling of desire towards you know another race or whatever why is it that you have you feel the need even to have to try to go halfway across the world Mm -hmm. to try to like mask that feeling you know because you know, you know that you may catch flack with, you know, the people that you live around. And then and then in Bootsy's case, his honesty, you know, while it it's honorable at, at one point, is is that his place? I get both sides. Yeah, I get his yeah. place. You know, he wanted to express how he mm-hmm. felt about it. He's a parent himself. Right. So he's a parent that's himself. What triggered it, yeah. And I get his concern. Mm-hmm. I get Mike Tyson, too, as crazy as he is, um, <laughs> <laughs> saying, you know, wait a minute, fall back. Like, at the end of the day, like, you're not them. You're not his parents. Like, you know, that's your perspective. But you don't your, your perspective doesn't really mean anything in the grand scheme of, yeah. of things. You are not but uncle. My, my thing I wanted to talk about real quick is like this whole theme of of being honest and and uh kind of expressing your 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 blunt self your inner self um i think we kind of got to come to a middle balance here because while on on one end you know you're seeing a lot of people getting stoned for being brutally honest in social media and brutally honest about how they feel about you know certain topics and Mm -hmm. you know that sort of thing they're getting shunned you know to where you know you talk about like dave Chappelle and certain comedians they don't even want to like talk sometimes because they know yeah. everything they say is going to get taken out of context. It doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> That's just what happens We're just comedians. gotten so sensitive now where everything is an issue. Yeah. Um, but there is another side of this where it's almost like, should we be saying everything we want to say though? Like there's certain times where I almost feel like class has kind of lost its, its nuance in our society where everybody wants to be so real mm. that there's a difference between being real and being real rude. Yeah. You know, like you can still say something real. Like we're genuine dudes. Mm-hmm. We keep it real on this podcast, but you don't see us calling everybody all sort of names and, you know, all that kind of stuff out here. Like you don't got to be so harsh that you purposely offend people. And sometimes I feel like that's what's happening in social media. I, I kind of was hope was wanting to delve into the uh the relationship section of the honesty, which maybe we'll get into that later. Oh, but we'll get into it right but, now. but you but no you but you brought yeah. up a good point because I do think that there are people out there who are being martyred for their honesty. Mm-hmm. But I think we need a balance of how honest do we need to be before it's time to fight? You know what I mean? Because oh, yeah, you are yeah. justified in how you feel in your response to people's honesty as well. What you call it got killed for uh sorry not killed <laughs> she uh. got criticized sweetie about the birkin bag thing oh yeah, yeah. okay so let's yeah. look at that one <laughs> yeah, yeah. what did yeah. she say if your man can't buy you a birkin bag he goes to back to the streets like ba- basically if he can't afford you get somebody else that okay. can okay yeah was she being honest but that was her perspective but that's her honest opinion right so well okay so she got caught smoke for that i think to a degree yes because mm-hmm. If you're going to be honest, mm-hmm. you, you got to understand honesty does not give you a pass to say everything you want without consequence, so it was right? An honest, it was an honest opinion. It's what an honest opinion. Yeah. And and while you can respect their opinion, like I respect their opinion, you can I can disagree with you yeah. and still, you know, be able to like associate with what you're what yeah, you're that's saying. That's what I did. Right? I disagreed with her and I just moved on. You like, just okay. move on. But <laughs> there is a there is a, a line that you have to understand because with that honesty, you never know how people are going to react to it. Yeah. So you can't 
say, oh, I get to be honest and say what I want. Mm-hmm. And yet at the same breath, tell tell people that they shouldn't be offended. Well, <laughs> wait a minute. They're being honest too, right? Yeah, yeah. They're offended. That's their honest yeah. opinion yeah, about their, what you're saying. Now they have an honest reaction. Right. So now it come, it becomes a juggling, juggling game where we got to balance. Now I can be honest and say what I want to say, mm-hmm. but there are always consequences for our, our actions. Is it worth it? Yeah. Is what I'm saying worth it? And that's where I think like people in history who have, you know, gotten mm. flack, like you talk about Richard Pryor oh, and like the, yeah. you know, original kings of like yeah. comedy and stuff like that, where they pushed the boundaries yeah, so much. Shock. Right. They got the, the yeah, flack. Yeah, yeah. But in their minds, it was worth it because they wanted to push mm. to another level, you know, something that they feel passionately mm, about. All right. So like you said, now this honesty could be a mask. So that's why I brought that's notice I said constructive criticism versus radical honesty. Right, right. Shock value honesty. Right. Yeah. So Question is, sweetie, did you really mean what you said or were you just doing that because you just wanted to piss people off on the ground right. just to start something? And some people are like that. You know exactly. what I mean? I just want to basically get a rise out of people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some, some people love that drama. So, no, that's that's an awesome point right yeah. there. And there are people out there. And that's why I say, like, I think this is a good thing to talk about because there's so many people out there now that our opinions are so easily, you know, distributed out yeah. there in social media mm-hmm. that do just do things just to get a, a get views. Yeah, just to get views. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on, man, look at Trump. I honestly don't believe that Trump believes half of the bullshit <laughs> that comes out of his mouth. I really don't. I, I can't like, tell no more. <laughs> yeah, right. Like he may, and like we talk about him being racist and all that stuff. But to be honest, if I'm really being true, I don't think he's racist. I think he knew that he tapped into a genre mm-hmm. of people who mm-hmm. felt a certain yeah. way. And he knew that the only way for him to keep relevant mm-hmm. was to keep feeding those people what they wanted to hear. Mm-hmm. Right. So you know, it's is it honesty though? No, I mean he's a pathological liar. But mm-hmm. but what he knew was there are people out there who do honestly feel this way, right. and so I gotta spark this to get get attention. And I think a lot of people mix mix that up. They say things basically to get you know views and they get comments or whatever. Mm-hmm. But is it really being real or is it just you know mm-hmm. kind of talking? Shit, you know, no, that's that's exactly pretty much what it is. And so now if we go dive into the relationship aspect. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, let's, let's talk about from a, for a guy, from a guy's p- perspective. Now we tend to try to look for that sweet spot. Yeah. Your wife asks you, do I look fat in this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do I look big in that? You know what I mean? What do you think of this color? What do you think of that color? What's going on in our minds is like, okay, so how can I answer this in a way where I won't compromise sex? Mm-hmm. Now, well, I'm just being honest, ladies. That's the, that, <laughs> right. we're, this is a show about honesty. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, that that is what's on our mind. Like, yeah. okay, okay, so there's two things here. Yeah. We could compromise our integrity of being a man and being honest and just be like, yeah, it makes you look fat. Right. <laughs> and sleep on the couch for the next two days. <laughs> yeah, or we could be gangster and just be like, yeah, it makes you look fat, but you also come in a solution. But it's like, but babe, you know, you, you know, it's Thanksgiving. You you grubbed. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was inevitable that you were going to gain weight. But we're not being rude about it. But if right. you look at what type of question that you've given us, you've given us a question that you already knew the answer to, but you're going to put the confirmation and the blame on us. Right. But the thing is, we can't make you comfortable with being, I don't want to go down this road. This is another type of two. But I don't want to make you go down a road of becoming overweight and becoming unhealthy. Mm. So if I'm telling you, yeah, this makes you look big and maybe you should lay off the pumpkin pie and the sweet potato <laughs> yeah, pies right. here and there <laughs> right. and I'll even work out with you, yeah. most definitely you're still going to get mad and you ain't going to talk to me for a week. But you right. already knew the answer. Right, right. That's why you asked me. But you, that's the thing, Reese. She didn't want you to tell her your opinion. Yeah. She wanted to hear verification on how what how she felt inside. That's why I said already. you want us to confirm what right. you already knew. Right, right. <laughs> and right. then you're gonna blame us instead of blaming yourself. So that's a good point. Cause so are you are you genuinely being honest at that point, right? Because yes. you're not really wanting the truth from us. Mm-hmm. You want us to validate your truth. Mm-hmm. And uh I think that's where it gets a little bit tricky. I've had scenarios where, you know somebody asked me my opinion about something mm-hmm. and I had to think in my head, like, I know they're going to be upset with what I really feel. Yeah. So how can I spin this so that like, they're not offended. And, and, and that's kind of where I wanted to go with this is mm-hmm. do I, do I need to do that? Do yeah. I need, and do you want that from me? Do you want me to give you the truth in like a powdered mm-hmm. form? Yeah. Or do you want me to just say what I really feel? And like, can you take that? But peep this. 
who are you for them to ask you that? So yeah, this yeah. goes back to Mike Tyson's question. Yeah, yeah. You're just minding your own business, playing, you know, 2K. Yeah. They come in, hey, I got a question for you. Yada, yada, yada. You're like this. I was just minding my own business, playing this damn game, and then you're going to come in here and put me uncomfortable because you know there's going to be a consequence whether you answer this right or wrong. Right. So maybe we should start firing back with like, who am I for you to ask me? Right. <laughs> Does it really matter to <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah, because yeah. that's how you kind of feel. It's like, right. okay, would you add, would you bring this information to Dr. Phil? Oh, or, or even more so, I can't tell you how many times a girl has asked me an opinion. I gave them my opinion mm-hmm. and they still went and did the same thing that they were going to do anyway. And then later on, they're like, oh, I should have listened to you. You damn right you should listen to me. Yeah. Why did you ask me in the first place? But well, then again, who are you? Right. Who am I? <laughs> right. Yeah. Who are you? Still, still, still lands in, in that pot the same way. Okay. So the other side of this, that's why I, I kind of wanted to talk about it too. Mm-hmm. So from a guy's perspective now, mm-hmm. like I've heard... You know, girls kind of like be a little bit, I don't know, feel a certain way. So like if a guy is like not really a faithful dude or or maybe, uh, you know, you didn't necessarily cheat on you. This but, is my favorite area. Okay. But he's kind of like sketch when it comes to like his interactions mm-hmm. with women where they may not be cheating or they may be mm-hmm. cheating, whatever. Mm-hmm. But they get into this thing where it's like what they say is like, yeah, you you knew this was who I was when you met me, mm. right? I was honest with you from the from the beginning. You know mm. where we are. You know where mm. we stand. I didn't want to be so, in a relationship. Anymore. Right, yeah. Mm. So you can't get mad at me because, you know, I was being honest. I, I was up front with you. These girls or whatever, like, they was here before you. Mm-hmm. They still here. Like, you can't really say nothing. Mm-hmm. And, like, I've even heard, like, girls, like, that I work with and stuff that was like, yeah, well, you know, at least he was honest, so I really can't really say much or be upset. He been honest though. That's the right. funny part. <laughs> yeah. So that's my question: is because he was honest, mm-hmm. does that mean that a girl can't change her mind? No. Can, th- like she invested in this from mm-hmm. the beginning, and he was true, saying, you know, you're not the only one, and all that stuff. But like we grow, right? Mm-hmm. So is she justified in wanting to switch up and expecting more? Mm-hmm. And does she need to? move on from that and mm-hmm. find somebody else or does she need or you know can she can she try to mold him into the person that she wants him to be that's where they went wrong yeah, yeah. And all right just like a, on our end you can't turn a hoe into a housewife yeah it goes in that same line see this was the issue here some chicks out there just have a problem with being honest with themselves Dope. You knew Facts. this dude did not want to no relationship from the beginning. That's one. Yeah. But then some girls out there are just so damn big headed to the point where this is a challenge for them. Yeah. Yeah. I can make him be in a relationship with me and I'm going to I'm say this and I'm going to do that and X, Y, Z. Then you end up getting in a relationship. Yeah. Then he ends up, you know, I'm going to say cheating yeah. in quotes. Only for the simple fact that you knew he liked, I don't want to say being a player. He he likes new booty. (laughs) He likes new chicks. He can't just be monogamous, especially if the guy is young. Most cats, you know, ladies, most cats under the age of 30. It's not happening. (laughs) (laughs) It's not happening, especially when we know what to do now. Yeah, you you holler at that dude, 35 plus. He's ready to settle down because he had his fun. You know what I mean? But getting back to the whole, yeah, most chicks got to be honest with themselves right then and there. And then you can't even be mad at the guy who just wanted to smash in the beginning. He told you that from the very beginning. You were just like, okay, that's okay. But you grew feelings yeah, yeah. he done told you that from the beginning <laughs> and now you over here stuck holding the emotional bag and you you make him looking like a on the joke jerk and he was being honest from the beginning and i have gone to many arguments about this thing the whole time like that's just messed up mm-hmm. like why would any why would you guys just do something just to smash a sex that important to you like yeah yeah of course yeah just like attention There's is that important there, to you of course yeah yeah you right. know you, you got we want less time to get to the sex y'all want more time to get to the sex right. you know what i mean because y'all want that attention so i want you guys to actually think of it like that attention to y'all is sex to us because the product doesn't matter right nah. the product all the product is is what we desire it change it changes from person to person oh, yeah, but yeah. the fact is like what we desire is what we're seeking from you just like what you desire is what you're seeking from us mm-hmm. so you can't get surprised when you're like oh well that's kind of messed up all he wanted was to smash well yeah but he told you that yeah. that's what he wanted just like you wanted a relationship mm-hmm. so the, the difference is you caved in on your desires and he mm-hmm. went for what he really wanted and yeah. that's why I say like people need to be honest I like I made this this question even though I know we all know the the truth 
you know, on what somebody should should be doing. If you really feel that way, you should be moving on mm -hmm. and finding somebody that's going to give you what you really want. Yeah. But you'd be surprised or maybe not surprised with how many women know this fact or will even ask you advice. You tell them this fact. Mm -hmm. And years later, they're still stuck in the same situation, mm -hmm. trying to change a person mm -hmm. who told you, nah, man, this is what I want. And like when it comes to guys, to your point, mm -hmm. 30 and below, you can forget it. Like if you're that if you're that way at 25, like you got a long way to go to try yeah, to even think about heads. maybe shaping this guy. Now, if no. a guy hits 35 and 40, he may get his priorities together, but you're not going to change a guy's mind at that age. So mm -hmm. the best thing for you to do, find somebody that fits what you want. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Like you there are people out there who who feel like okay i should just be thankful for what you know we discuss no you don't got to be like yeah. if you want something else you have every right to like want something else but you just can't get it from him right you can get it from somebody else who who's willingly going to give it to you mm -hmm. so and and honestly you guys already knew this from the beginning yeah <laughs> any any time we want to like talk to you or help you is because of that aspect you know right. what i mean but as we get older like the point you made when it comes to like getting up in age we actually have more of the offer than just you know a twig and berries now <laughs> right, right. you know what i mean we actually now want to offer provision and protection we don't have that to offer in the early 20s and things of that right. nature. So, yeah, you end up getting with a young guy. He's 24 and you're 23 and you find out he's cheating. That's going to happen for a very long time. He has nothing to offer you to keep you. Right. Nothing. All he has is hormones right, right, <laughs> and testosterone. Right. He's blazing fire. You guys don't know what it's like to have all of this in us. Right. You know what I mean? And then we get around the opposite sex. It's like, oh, crap. Like when y'all be twerking in the clubs and everything. Yeah, we end up going nuts. Right. Yeah. So it's like that fire comes out and whoops babe i have something to tell you right. <laughs> you know i ran into this girl while i was at the bar and sorry i cheated and then you want to kill me for it but i was honest with you right and the honest and honestly the, the honest reason was sh she came on to me she was ready to go right right you haven't touched me in months right. so i smashed i'm sorry so now, like you said, you could take it or leave it. You could work it out. Now, the only thing that sucks is, yeah, he can do it again because he had a like, I don't know. See, the thing is, I haven't cheated. So when you probably cheat, it's like you get a taste of it. It's like that blood. It's like I'm sure. blood. It's like, wow, we're still together. Work it out. I just need to be a little more discreet now right, right, right. <laughs> about, about what I'm doing. Right. You know what I mean? Or then there's some people out there that's actually just feel actually bad. Now, the thing is, I'm being honest, ladies, if your reaction to your man cheating you know, men too, if your reaction of your woman cheating is getting pissed and throwing stuff and having a fit and yelling, all that stuff, you're going to get cheated on again. Yeah. But if yeah. you are actually heartbroken and you do feel violated and you show them that, yeah, now he feels guilty. Right. Like, oh my God, what have I freaking done? <laughs> well, and I think it depends on your your vices. And this is a, a topic I, I kind of want to save a little bit for another thing because it's right. a really big thing to unpack. But mm -hmm. I will say this. I, I have... There's a lot of things that like I really am, could never probably be addicted to. Like I'm not really a drinker like that. Yeah. I got friends that drink one drink and then they're just like yeah, they done. Turn up. Like yeah, <laughs> me like I'm I'm only a casual casual occasional drinker. Mm -hmm. I'll drink a little bit of something and then I'm I'm done. I don't really care, mm -hmm. right? But then there's certain things like I used to play poker and. I got to a point where I was so attached to that game, man. I was at the poker place like mm -hmm. almost every day. Yeah, it was right. Addictive. And I was good at the game, but I didn't want to keep going through that route. I ended yeah, up yeah. having to like stop playing poker. Like I don't play oh, poker oh, anymore. Damn. Just because you, you were gambling. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it got yeah. to the point where I started gambling. Yeah. And so now I don't even go to those spots because I feel like I would just put myself in a situation where things could mm, get worse. So you were playing cards instead of playing the guy. Exactly. Yeah, okay. And I think that's where it changes. Like you might have guys out there who may get into something and it was a dumb situation. They're like, you know what? I messed up, man. I'm not mm. doing that again. Mm -hmm. And and then that's that. But if that's your addiction, if that's your vice, right? Like you're never going to be able to change that dude, man. Like he's going to be dealing with that in, from the, for the rest of his life because that's his vice. Mm -hmm. So you got to balance and find out for yourself. I can't tell you what type of man you got, but there's some men that it may, you may be able to like salvage that relationship because that's not their vice. Mm -hmm. But if that's their vice, boy, like, 
good luck. It's not. It's not. It's not going to really happen. I don't think. And, uh, let's go put the fellas too, because I, w- I want to like you know play devil's advocate a little bit. Yeah. Like some of y'all just <laughs> y'all really need to admit y'all pulled a bad chick. You never really thought that you even have a chick this bad in your life who goes out of the way to like make you feel special and do all these things for you. So you end up sabotaging your own relationship. Mm. You become insecure. Mm. <laughs> you know, some of you guys actually kind of need to like bring that up up front. So yeah. when the question was, what is the sweet spot of when to be honest? Yeah. Right there up front. Yeah. yeah right yeah. there up in the beginning. You can nip it in the bud and just be like, you know what? Way back when I had this chick and, you know, she was bad and this, that, and this, that. And every time she would go out with her friends, I felt very uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And I was very insecure at the time because I didn't have anything to offer. Yeah, yeah. I was this young cat in my 20s, you know what I mean? Still living with his mom. You know what I mean? She still lived with her parents too. But the thing is, older cats would come and pop at her, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And yeah, when, when you on a bike pulling up at your girl's house and, you know, a dude try to holler at her and he in a drop top Mustang right. or whatever. You will feel a certain <laughs> way for sure. Yeah, you know, and then, you know, when he pulls up on your girl talking about what's up, he just, just happens to be bumping no scrubs. Right. <laughs> You're gonna feel right. a certain type right. of way. It's, That's it's a so, jerk, man. Yeah, like, <laughs> you didn't you mean selected that, that song <laughs> for me to feel embarrassed. But yeah, when yeah. a man who who is basically shows that he is valuable to a chick's life, yes, yeah, she could get turned on by it, yeah. and she can choose to either build with you or roll with him. Yeah. But he's well established. He's already done. The only thing you could do for yourself is to be like, okay, babe, I understand he got everything, but I want to be like that. I want to aspire myself to be in that group, that same group he's in. I know I'm 22, but give me about a good 13 years and I'm there. She can make the choice to build with you. And I'm not talking about basketball wives of people like LeBron and Kobe and them because they wives stuck with them from the very beginning since the draft of high school. But they were talented. So they already saw the future, you know, the future value, you know, value in, you know, they're soon to be husbands, you know, but God, regular guys who is just working at Best Buy or something. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have that luxury until you get your degree and then you move on into corporate America, go through the internship for about two years, then become an associate. Then next thing you know, you're a hardcore employee. And then after that, you know, you you finally made it right. and you just happen to be 35. But your girl already cheated on you twice with people the same age as you who already had it going on. So, yeah, you can kick them to the curb. Yeah. You, yeah, you, you can do that. So I done lost track rambling. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm but, with you. No, but, but I get it. Yeah. I'm with you. Like, you got to get, I, I think, I think to encompass this whole thing, we got to understand that while honesty is, of course, the best policy, we all learned that when we were kids. Yes. There are degrees of honesty that we've got to be comfortable with accepting in ourselves. What are those degrees? Well, yeah, <laughs> well, and that's the thing. Like, it's everybody's got their own gauge. You got to really be able to figure that out for yourself. And when, it, especially when it comes to interacting with others in a relationship, honesty, of course, is the best policy. But how you package that, how you relay that message, mm-hmm. and how you deal with that is going to have to be on a case to case basis. You can't go from one scenario and say, oh, flat out I'm going to be this throughout every scenario unless you're ready with the consequences of that because some people Mm -hmm. people are different man you got to be able to balance how you're going to interact with people and especially when it comes to your significant other Mm -hmm. y'all got to figure that out because that will be a problem down the road if y'all can't be honest with each other and take that honesty you know the way you should appropriately and stop being so a lot of people are like like outcome dependent when it comes to like honesty and i think what's jacked up is because a lot of individuals are put into situations where they know they're not going to get something if they're honest about something and that's just backwards as hell yeah this is very yeah. very backwards right so my thing is this i would say be completely honest no matter what. I like Mark Manson. I think his name is Mark Manson. Mm-hmm. I read his book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. <laughs> I, watched the, I, li- I listened to that yeah. too. Yeah, he, Did you really get to good. the part where he said when he traveled to Europe, and yeah. he said he had a whole lot of respect for all the European men out there because they don't give a damn. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> they right. will tell you if you look like some, if your ass is backwards. and right. they, Yeah, they give you the real out there. Right. And then they end up shaping up. They end up learning from it. Right. So now when you come over here to America, you know, so... What do you think? It'll do. Yeah. Why are why are we so quick to like sugarcoat honesty? Right. We even do it with the homies. Now yeah. with the ladies, no, nah, I ain't gonna say that because you know right. you they be tripping. You I'm trying to be on the couch. I'm not trying to be in the dark. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, but why are we doing with the homies? So what y'all think of my track? Right. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, that was that was nice, fam. Yeah, and you yeah. know you hate that crap. Like it's different. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Whenever well, we y'all like, get that one, right. it's different. Right. It's whack. Right. Or you low key like want to make a suggestion on like how to adjust something. Like that means it was which horrible. Is, which too. is everything. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it shouldn't have to like get that far. It's like when you are honest to somebody. Now you have to basically give a solution. I think that's yeah. where the problem lies because a lot of people like I look fat in this. Yeah, yeah. Damn, I, you know, it look, and it looks bad. But if you're like, do I look fat in this? Is like, yeah, you do. But, but and you you throw off the solution, like, but you know, you you gained weight, like I said in the beginning. Yeah. So how about I work out with you and you know we do a big. I mean, not like that, but yeah. <laughs> gosh, <laughs> you know we do a big in the gym, right? And we slim down to whatever you know goal that you're trying to get to. You know what I mean? I'm happy to do it with you. You know what I mean? So I believe me, my opinion, that's where that sweet spot is. Yeah. Now the penalty for the honesty. Want to speak on that <laughs> well i i actually i think i want to table this because i realize now this this topic is so big we could do a whole nother part, part two <laughs> that's on a this. damn shame right. and, and i really <laughs> think we sad. should because there's so many more elements to this especially when it comes to like relationships that we are just grazing so Stay tuned for that because I think we're gonna table this. We're gonna do a part two on this honesty thing. But I, but I want to say, you know, you know, be thankful for the scenario that you're in, mm-hmm. but also be aware of the scenario that you're in. And uh, if you're not happy with it, then you got to figure out something else to do. And be thankful if you actually have somebody who's always real with you. Yeah, you know what I mean, because I mean, uh, that's that's rare. Yeah, be, somebody being a buck with you and they still in your life that's hard to come by. I need to appreciate that individual, and I'm sure that individual has probably helped you to the point of success where you are today. Right, for sure. You know, so uh, are, are, right. we, are we out? What, what, I think I think I think that's it, man. Like I'm. This was a. Uh, this was a big one. This was a big unpacking. And I feel mm-hmm. like this is perfect because Thanksgiving is a big, big holiday. Yeah, man. Um, hopefully we can get the same sort of energy on Christmas. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a big see. one, too. So stay tuned for that. Especially with COVID going around, man. Yeah. Like, y'all be careful out there on Black Friday. Jeez. <laughs> Wait a minute. They're going to be social dis. That means y'all can't be barging in the stores no more. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Just going to have they to Amazon have like a Black me. Friday sale, huh? I've been Amazon in Black Friday for the last five years, and I don't even know what it looked like right, out there. So. Watch. His face is up on the pitch on Amazon. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, like the this. MVP of Amazon, boy. Get on my level. <laughs> How can they find you, bro? Yo, yo, uh, thank you again for checking us out. You can find me on Diggy City on Instagram and on Twitter. Uh, what about you? Yeah. Uh, you can find me on the gram at Good Evening Mr. Black. Find me on Twitter, Evening Mr. Black. And also be sure to follow us on the gram at CO2 Rawcast and follow us on Facebook, Carbon Ops Rawcast, or also under uh, CO2 Rawcast. For sure. And if you guys are checking us out on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe to the CO2 Rawcast channel, subscribe to uh, Diggy City channel. And I think at some point you probably need to have your own individual channel because oh, I God, think nah. people want to follow that the, too. The, the, it's called Instagram Live. <laughs> Real. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm on TikTok too. Uh, what's my TikTok name. Are you on TikTok? Yeah, I can't I, do that. I, I just did because you know Don D's he on there, so he saw me. Uh, shout out to Don D's. Shout out to the yeah, homie. Shout out to Don D's, Yo, baby. By the way, if y'all ain't checking him out, man, Don D's guy has a really cool podcast called the Urban Profits. Check him out on Spotify. Mm-hmm. Uh his uh YouTube channel is high too, so check him out. Um, but yeah, man, thank y'all for tuning in, man. This has been a blast. This is episode four of the CO2 Carbon Ops Broadcast. Until next time, we will see you then. Peace. Flip side.